Hey, it's Sam from Sugar Spun Run, and today we're making Oreo cheesecake cookies. Okay, this recipe is a fun one. If you are a fan of gourmet, borderline outlandish cookies, if you like a nice gourmet cookie, you're going to love this recipe. We are stuffing cheesecake inside an Oreo laden cookie. It's amazing. Let's go ahead and get right to it. The first thing we're going to make is our cheesecake filling. We'll start with eight ounces of softened cream cheese. I do recommend a full fat brick style cream cheese. It's the only one that I really use with my recipes. We're just going to add this to a mixing bowl. To this, we're going to add one third cup of granulated sugar, and we're going to stir the cream cheese and sugar together until they are smooth and well combined. If your cream cheese is soft enough, you should easily be able to do this with a spatula, but alternatively, you could use an electric mixer. When you're making cheesecake, it's really important that that cheesecake have a nice tang and depth of flavor. I find it can be hard to achieve with just cream cheese alone, so I always love to enhance my cheesecakes with some sour cream. The filling for these cookies is no exception, so we'll be adding two tablespoons of sour cream, And we're also going to add 1 4 teaspoon of vanilla extract, so just a little bit of that. And we're going to stir these in as well until we have a nice smooth mixture. This will obviously be our cheesecake filling and it's amazing. All right, so once this is combined, we are going to scoop this into tablespoon sized dollops, which will be the filling for our cookie. So I just do level tablespoons and I'm going to drop this on a wax paper lined baking sheet. I want to get 18 dollops, so I'm making sure to scrape the sides and bottom of the bowl. That way I can use all of the filling. We don't waste butter and we don't waste cheesecake batter. I have a little bit extra, so I'm going to add it to the smallest dollop I have. All right, so this is going to need to go into the freezer now because these need to freeze until they're solidified. That way we can fit them into our cookie dough without it just oozing everywhere. So I'm going to pop these in the freezer and then we'll start making our cookie dough. Okay, this dough, I love this dough because while the concept of Oreo cheesecake cookie sounds like a lot, sounds a little complicated, all the parts of it are very easy to make. This dough is no exception and it's delicious. We are starting with one cup of softened unsalted butter. Drop this right in our large mixing bowl. Someone called me out because I didn't scrape my butter wrapper the other day. So we're doing that today because we don't waste butter here. It's Nikki's favorite saying. But seriously, it's not cheap these days. Don't waste it. No Oreos yet, I promise they are coming. This is gonna be the Oreo part of the Oreo cheesecake. First, we're just doing the butter and our sugar. You need one and a half cups of granulated sugar and uh, Today's recipe could absolutely be made in a stand mixer, but today I'm just going to be using my electric hand mixer instead. And we will cream together the butter and sugars until they are light and fluffy and well creamed. This just takes about a minute or two. I say we don't waste sugar either, but evidently we just send that flying everywhere. I say creamy and well combined a lot and I feel like people don't always know what I'm talking about. So I just want to point out to you, this mixture looks PC, it's not smooth, it's not well combined. You do not want to stop while your mixture looks like this or your butter won't be properly creamed, your ingredients won't be properly incorporated. So we're going to keep going. And today we're using all granulated sugar, no brown sugar, because I really wanted the Oreo flavor to shine and the brown sugar just kind of bullied that a little bit, took away a little bit from the Oreo, just granulated. Okay, so here we are. This is what I'm talking about when I say creamy and well combined or light and fluffy. You can just kind of look at that texture and know that you're good. Next, we will add our eggs. So for today's recipe, we'll be using two large eggs. These should ideally be at room temperature. And pretty soon I'm going to be drowning in eggs because I'm now up to 26 chickens. Not sure how that happened so fast. It went from eight to 26, but here we are. Some of you out there will know what I'm talking about when I say chicken math is a real thing. All right, we'll add these right in with our butter and sugar. We're also going to add some vanilla extract. We're using one teaspoon. 
And we'll use our electric mixer again to get everything nice and well combined. Beautiful. This is like my favorite shade of yellow. Pre-flower cookie dough yellow. So buttery and gorgeous. Okay, we're done with this for a minute. Grab yourself a separate mixing bowl and you will need three and two thirds cups of all purpose flour in here. To this, we will add two tablespoons of cornstarch. So why cornstarch? Cornstarch is going to help keep our cookies from spreading too much. They'll keep their shape. They'll be nice and soft and tender and they're going to hold in that cheesecake filling, which is possibly the most important part. Special guest star just showed up a little bit late, but that's fine. We won't hold it against him. I need you to give me two teaspoons of baking powder and add it to the mixing bowl. Oh, do you okay. want to okay, just get the rest and you're good. Perfect. We are also going to be doing one fourth teaspoon of baking soda. We want the cookies to spread just a little bit, so I didn't want to leave out the baking soda entirely. I'm going to do it. Go for it. And last but not least, we are going to add one half teaspoon of salt. Mom, I'm going to do it. Okay, let me measure it out for you and you can add it. This is table salt we're adding. Go ahead. Now we'll whisk our dry ingredients together until everything's nicely combined. Just gonna do a little bit more. All right, he bailed pretty quickly. All right, let's bring back that beautiful buttery, buttercup colored butter mixture. And we are going to gradually add our dry ingredients to our wet and stir them in until completely combined. I'm going to use my mixer for this again. I'll usually add the flour in like three or four parts. You don't want to add it all at once or it will just be too difficult to get everything to mix together. Not impossible, just difficult. And this dough already lends itself to being a little bit more dry by nature, just because that's important, once again, for holding that cheesecake filling in and not letting it, you know, ooze out when you bake the cookies. Okay, so the next ingredient we are going to be adding is one cup of mini chocolate chips. And finally, our Oreos. You'll be using 20 Oreos for today's recipe. Haven't yet tried this with my homemade Oreos that I just shared, but that would be a fun experiment. So I'm a little bit nitpicky about how I want these cookies to look. I'm a little obsessive about that. So one thing I'm going to do that you don't have to do is you have to break up your cookies. I'm going to break them over a bowl and I'll break them into small pieces. And the bowl is going to catch all of those like fine crumbs. And then I'll toss the pieces in with the rest of my dough. And again, this is a little bit nitpicky, but if you get all of those teeny tiny Oreo crumbs in your mixture, it can just make the dough look a little bit more muddied or it can even make it turn a little bit gray. It's not going to change the taste at all just an extra step, but if you're a perfectionist with your cookies like I am, here's just a little trick for you. And if you don't wanna break them all one by one like I'm doing here, you could just place them all in like a large Ziploc bag, whack them a couple times with a rolling pin, and then just grab a fine mesh sifter and just sift them over a separate bowl. That way that will catch all the crumbs and you won't get any crumbs in your cookie dough. You'll get a few crumbs in your cookie dough, but it won't be a big deal. We'll just speed it up and use the strainer since I already got it out. And then final thing I do in order to keep this cookie dough a little bit more pristine is I will fold everything together using a spatula instead of using the electric mixer because the electric mixer would break up the cookies even more and kind of muddy the dough a little bit too. You can skip my perfectionist tips. I will not be offended. Your cookies will still taste the same and amazing. But if you are a little obsessive like me, this might be a helpful trick for you. All right, everything's well distributed. Now the most obnoxious part about this recipe is that there are several chilling periods. This dough is going to need to chill in the refrigerator for 30 minutes before we can use it. I know it can be a pain, it's hard to have the patience, but it is necessary because we wanna keep that cheesecake filling inside the cookie. So these extra steps are just, are just part of the process. 
While this dough is chilling, you can get your oven preheating to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Once the dough has chilled, we can uncover it. And at this point, your cheesecake should be frozen pretty much solid so we can start assembling our cookies. One quick thing to note is this cheesecake is actually going to soften pretty quickly. So what I'll typically do is I'll leave it in the freezer and then I'll just grab a couple dollops at a time and just work with a few at a time so it doesn't melt completely. Okay, these are big cookies, which means we need a big cookie scoop. I am going to scoop one fourth cup of dough, approximately, which is a little less than this measuring cup actually. It looks like I didn't quite get a fourth cup. There's a little pocket hiding in there. So then I'm going to take this dough and I'm just going to make a pocket in the center. I'm just gonna use my thumb to make a nice little nest there. We'll grab one of our cheesecake dollops and we're going to press that in. And then I'm going to fold the dough around. Now, if you need more dough, you can certainly grab it. The important thing is that no cheesecake is showing. Now, the more dough that you use, the less cream cheese filling you will have proportionally. So I don't like to use too much dough, but I do want to encourage you to make sure you use enough. This actually looks pretty good. I'm gonna add just another smidge on the bottom and then I'll roll it to be a nice smooth ball. We'll place it on our baking sheet. Well, you'll want to make sure you space your cookies at least two inches apart. And go ahead and repeat with another ball of cookie dough. And the Oreo pieces can make the dough kind of want to fall apart a little bit. So just be mindful of that. And all you have to do is press it back together. Another nest in the center. We'll fold the dough around. I love these cookies. I really can't wait for you to try them. Now, as I mentioned, you should get 18 dollops of cheesecake filling. So you should be able to get 18 cookies out of this dough if you measure everything properly. If you have a little bit of dough left over, just make some extra cookies without the filling. They'll still be delicious. All right, let's take these over to our oven where they're going to need to bake for about 12 minutes. When the cookies are finished baking, you may notice that the edges are beginning to turn a light golden brown. You will want to let these cool completely on their baking sheet or let them cool for 10 minutes and then transfer them to a cooling rack to cool completely. Either is fine, but be careful because they're kind of fragile when they're warm. Also be careful because that cheesecake filling is going to be super hot when they first come out of the oven and you don't want to burn yourself. Now, if you cut into these cookies before they have cooled 100%, which can take a little bit of time. You may notice the insides look a little bit gooey and underdone. They just need to cool completely before that goes away. Now these cookies have had some time to cool, probably not as much as I would ideally recommend, but I don't exactly have a lot of patience. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut into one so you can see how they look inside. That one looks good. Let's go ahead and take a peek in there. Oh yeah. <laughs> Make sure you can see that on camera. Take a look at that. That is how you make a really, really good cookie. I cannot wait for you to try this. If you do, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. I always love hearing from you. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Oh my gosh. Every time I make a cookie, I'm like, this is my new favorite cookie. And this cookie is no exception. Oh my gosh. Mm. Try something. And we don't have anything to try. I had the loneliness. You had to make an appearance because your brother did? did you yeah. That? Mom, when can I try Oreo? <gasps> <laughs> I tried less that's it left in there. No. Good job!